I do genuinely believe that you could build businesses that are actually doing good for humanity yeah. and giving yeah. back to society. Yeah. And so I think with Tiffin, that's really the core of it, right? It's like, yeah, it's like we're delivering food and we're like creating these really, really fun experiences for people and really giving them great food. But right. then also for chefs, it's like a way for them to share their own culture. Yeah. And I think the essence of any culture starts with the food. Right? And for immigrants, food is like a way for them to express their own culture, like their own stories, the difficulties they've been through, but also the amazing things that they've accomplished. All right, guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to Sagar. He is also a member of the Launch House, and he started Tiffin, which is a food delivery platform which focuses on serving you homestyle South Asian cuisine from cooks in your community. So he's going to be sharing a lot more about it. You'll learn a little more about Sagar today, and we're going to be heading out to Temescal Canyon, which is a hike in Malibu, as well as Will Rogers State Beach. So it should be a fun time, and I'm really excited for you to meet him today. So he's somewhere downstairs, and he's going to show us a little more of Tiffin, and how it works. So let's go and find him. Oh, there he is. Hello, Sagar. Hey, how's, it going? how's it going? So what exactly oh. is Tiffin? Can you just the, the rundown of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How it works? So Tiffin is a marketplace basically connecting home chefs with eaters in the area who mm. want homemade South Asian food. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite simple, right? So oftentimes within South Asian communities, you get a lot of what we call like aunties and uncles mm -hmm. who cook amazing food, yeah. right? They have this amazing culinary talent. Um, and then you have eaters such as myself who are oftentimes away from home. Like I was on the road for about three years when I worked at Uber yeah. and had great dinner budgets, and dinner allowances, but it was really tough to just get that homemade meal that I would often get like in my mom or my dad's kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so basically we would look around and like try to find these aunties and uncles in the area to right. just get homemade food, but it was really tough, right? Yeah. Because there was no like marketplace bringing everyone together. Yeah. Um, so that's why we built Tiffin. Really, it was just a way for us to like help these community chefs, mm -hmm. enable them with much more financial opportunities because they have this amazing talent. Mm -hmm. And then for eaters like me who just can't cook. <laughs> yeah. It was a great way to get homemade food. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been a really exciting experience. Can you show us a little bit how it works? Yeah, 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 for sure. Here. So this is a website, tiffinfood.co. So once you get here, put in a zip code so we can do Long Island, for example. And it'll find chefs within your area. So we have four chefs in the Long Island area right now. Anu makes this awesome biryani. So this is something that she's, you know, really, really good at. It's honestly some of the best biryani that I've ever had. And so once you get here, you can basically select what meal you want. And it's pretty simple. I mean, it's just add it to your cart. And it takes about 48 hours as of right now. It gives the chefs enough time to like do the grocery shopping and really package the food beforehand. So it's not currently on demand, but I think eventually it'll get to that point. But yeah, otherwise, pretty simple. You just add it to your cart and then check out. That's about it. Cool, love, love, love. Which dish would you recommend the most for people that- <laughs> I would say the biryani. The biryani. It's, I mean, I think it's my favorite thing so far, but I think with every chef, they're really, really good at different meals, mm -hmm. right? So that's one thing that I really like is like, Oftentimes it gives the chefs a chance to just figure out, you know, what meal do they hyper specialize in? Mm -hmm. And then they just put that up on the menu. And yeah, no, I, I, for me though, I would say the biryani has been like the best food that I've had. Cool, sure. well everyone check out the biryani. <laughs> awesome, all right, Sagar, that was great. Uh, you ready to head out for yeah. that? Yeah, awesome. yeah, let's, let's go. Do. Mescal Canyon? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, Sagar. So how did yeah. you come up with the name Tiffin? Is there a story behind that? Yeah, mm -hmm. so Tiffins are basically, um, they're like these Indian lunch boxes. And so you could Google it, but they're like these metal boxes that sort of sit on top of each other and they stack really nicely. Um, and people will take them as a lunch box to work or like you'll see kids around India like taking them to school. 
Uh, and oftentimes it sort of signifies just like homemade food, right? That you're taking for lunch. And so I think with just like our mission of providing homemade authentic food, it just really fit in well. Okay, <laughs> so we've just gone to Temesco Canyon. We uh, we made it. <laughs> made it safe. We did make it safe. Didn't crash. <laughs> yeah, you almost. Didn't crash. Yeah, almost. How was the drive? For it's you? all right. You know, I had <laughs> to navigate already. and I had to drive. Yes, he did. And I had to talk. <laughs> he had to do so much. But we made it safely. <laughs> we made it safely. <laughs> That's cool. what counts. True. Now we just gotta find the trail, the correct trail. That's yeah. true. Let me get Somewhere around. Real quick. Yes. Found a selfie stick over here. It's right here. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's actually maybe we should vlog with it. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. So perfect. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you've mentioned you mentioned briefly in the car, um, like you did a bit of traveling. Tell us a little more of like how those travels impacted maybe like the way you navigate through the world. Yeah. 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 Or so give us the story first. Yeah. <laughs> just tell me about your life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we used to travel a lot. When, when I was a kid. So I think like every, actually like every summer we'd go back to India. Mm -hmm. um, that's where my parents are from, from like Punjab area, which is like the Northern part. Mm -hmm. And so we'd like go back to visit family and it was like such a different world. I remember as a kid, right? Yeah. Like it's just, it's like beautifully chaotic, if that makes sense, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? There's just like so much stuff going down, but then the actual culture is like so vibrant, mm -hmm. so rich. Right. Um, and I think that's a lot of just why, like, I've been so close to that culture mm -hmm. and like, even where like Tiffin comes from, right. It's like yeah. the idea of like wanting to show the Indian culture to the world around us mm -hmm. or even just like more broadly, the South Asian culture. I think just in terms of, yeah, seeing different parts of the world was, I think eye opening and just that understanding that my life is not, it's not the life that everyone else has. Right. right and I think right, it's like right. such an obvious yeah, statement, exactly. but until you see it, it's, yeah it just kind of shapes you in a different way and you mm -hmm. realize like, okay, whatever I make or create, like I want to do it so that other parts, like people in other parts of the world can experience mm -hmm. that as well. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> All right, check this out. Okay. This is a whole adventure right here. Yes. Got this broken tree. That you're gonna, tree. you're gonna climb. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll it. climb it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Which one? This one? Yeah. Are you much of a tree climber? Uh, I used to I used to climb trees more when I was younger, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Can you, can you try the leaf? Sure, like it's a hobby I'm trying to get back into. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's actually a good one. Ooh. We should do one up here. How's it feel? <laughs> it feels amazing. Are you one with nature? I am one with nature. <sighs> okay, so what would you say is something that has happened in your life that has really impacted you or shaped you into who you are today? Yeah, that's... I think tra so traveling has definitely been one of the biggest ones. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. But other than that, I would say like, honestly, it's probably just like my family and friends. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's definitely been the biggest factor for sure. Yeah. Um, and again, those like travels back to India when I was a kid, like yeah, just seeing how other people lived. Yeah, was, that's huge. Was always impactful. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely shaped who I was. Uh, my parents have had like a huge impact, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like them both being immigrants and like, you know, raising a family in the States and yeah. like also supporting their own family back home in India. Yeah. And just seeing how hardworking like my mom and dad have been. Right. It's yeah, definitely yeah. impacted me a lot. Um, so that's, that's probably like the biggest thing for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of, yeah, a lot of what you're doing now, even with like Tiffin, like it, it kind of all comes together. Yeah. With like South Asia. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I honestly feel like it's just such an exciting culture yeah it's yeah it's like so vibrant yeah like it is so colorful it is yeah so rich yeah like there's so much that people haven't yet explored including yeah. myself right yeah. but like 
the culture itself has so much to tell like so many stories to tell right um yeah. and so yeah like and i think oftentimes even as a south asian american like there's mm-hmm. no there's no like brand that i identify with you right. know there's no brand like in america where i'm like oh this is mm-hmm. my identity mm-hmm. and i don't know like and a part of me feels like that's what i want this brand to be in a right. way it's like for every south asian american to feel like okay like this brand is it identifies me and like the stories that my families have right. have been through yeah and told. yeah that makes sense um so yeah no i'm definitely super passionate about it that's cool sure. what would you say is one of your favorite things about indian culture i think it's honestly like that so india in itself so my, what my dad used to always say is it's like a mini europe right you travel you travel like 100 miles and you feel like you're in this like totally different country it's like mm-hmm. a different language different food different culture the only thing that's consistent is maybe the currency right Mm -hmm. but other than that it's like a completely different world Mm -hmm. so it's like within this dense area you have like just so much different stuff going on and like Mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of years worth of history Mm -hmm. and so when you kind of think about it from that perspective it's like it's kind of wild right Mm -hmm. like there's just so much there and so much to actually explore and uncover Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. so I, i think that's probably like the biggest thing there's everything from like crazy like mystic stuff mm-hmm. right and like <laughs> like yeah, like, sure. like i don't know, even like traditions my family would say they'd be like don't eat meat on tuesdays it's bad for you or just mm-hmm. like weird stuff like that but it's always like really interesting to know where that comes from to even just i don't know like ayurvedic medicine and like all of these sort of like traditional medicinal things that like now people are sort of uncovering are actually good for you right and it's like how did people know about this thousands of years ago so i don't know there's just like so much there so much history and yeah, I think it's just, there's something about it that's like really exciting. Yeah. And like, makes me very curious. Ugh. You know? Yes. How was your tree climbing experience? <laughs> was it? Um, it was good. I haven't yeah. climbed trees in, a, it's been a while. It was I forgot pretty how, high up there. I, I mean, how did you even, how did you even get up there? I don't know. I'm kind of like <laughs> short and like, how did I do it? Yeah, you're like a monkey. <laughs> yeah, well, like, Sagar actually helped me, so. That's true. That's true. I actually <laughs> brought did. a stepping stool with me. He did, he did. Though we're not going to show you guys. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> All right, so we have just arrived at Will Rogers State Beach and just found some parking and we're gonna go to the water. Are you cold? Are you cold? Okay. I'm freezing. (laughs) freezing. (laughs) What would you say are some of your core values in life and then maybe how has that helped you when creating Tippin? I do genuinely believe that you could build businesses that are actually doing good for humanity yeah. and giving yeah. back to society. Yeah. And so I think with Tiffin, that's really the core of it, right? It's like, yeah, it's like we're delivering food and we're like creating these really, really fun experiences for people mm-hmm. and really giving them great food. But right. then also for chefs, it's like a way for them to share their own culture. Yeah. And I think the essence of any culture starts with the food, mm-hmm. right? And for immigrants, food is like a way for them to express their own culture and like their own stories the difficulties they've been through but also the amazing things that they've accomplished right so coming back to like the values for tiffin again it's i think just everything we do is like how do we do good for our customers being both eaters and then also the chefs as well Mm -hmm. yeah no i love that that's amazing i think my next question was going to be like how do you think tiffin like positively impacts lot of it yeah no honestly just like the chefs are a a big focus right they're like people that people that I would consider like people that I grew up with in a way like my parents friends or like different aunties and uncles we would see at the temple or you know just I I feel like every single chef has such an amazing story to tell so I think with Tiffin the way we want to build it is to make it so that this platform basically tells those stories mm-hmm. for them, right? It like yep. empowers them to tell those stories yeah. and like share their own experiences yeah. and their own culture. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I love all of what you just shared and it sounds like you're really working on something that is really impactful, honestly. So 
what would you say for anyone that is a, an aspiring entrepreneur and they want to start something as well and bring something to the world yeah. uh, what would you say for that so first of all I'm like just getting started um, right yeah. so I think I things that I've learned at least since I've gotten started I think the the toughest thing is like just just like removing yourself from that expectation that mm -hmm. society has yeah and I think that for me has been the hardest thing is like just like putting myself out there mm -hmm. and there's gonna be things that I know like I'm I know I'm probably gonna screw up at times but I think just being okay with it yeah. and like learning from it right it's probably the biggest thing it's just like put yourself out there and, and be okay with being wrong sometimes yeah it's amazing yeah that's really good advice really really good advice. Yeah. <laughs> so you said that you're just pretty much getting started with starting tiffin does anything scare you about creating this I mean what are the hard parts about it good parts and yeah does anything scare you about just kind of going all in and creating yeah. your own thing yeah I think like failure is always it's always scary right um, just the concept of like trying to do something working really hard at it and like that not going the way that you want it to yeah, so like that definitely does scare me um, and I think that like one way that I'm trying to get away from that fear at least is realizing that at the end of the day whatever happens like it's still just a good learning experience mm -hmm. and it's still a good like it's a good story to tell right mm -hmm. at the end of the day like yeah. like when I get Again, it's like when I think about my own life, right, in like 60, 70, 80 years from now, whatever it is, and I'm like sitting on my deathbed, mm -hmm. I want to at least tell myself that I like tried to do something, regardless yeah. of whatever happened. It's yeah. like I, I, I had this vision and I tried to go after it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think honestly my biggest ultimate fear, even outside of Tiffin, is getting to that point and like having a regret, yeah. right, of like not doing something that I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I would say, again, it, it is a fear of like trying something but failing at it, but ultimately, it's just a good experience. Yeah. And whatever happens at the end of the day, it's like you, you take those experiences and learnings and then you like move forward with them. And yeah. Hopefully, the next thing, if I have to do something else, it, it's a much better uh, story. That's you know? true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, even if, like, you, even if you fail, like, you learn so much along the way. Yeah, 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 I know. And I think yeah. a lot of it is just, like it is just experiences that you get from it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so that's the way. That's what I told myself at least. Yeah. What do you love the most about having starting this? I think it's like this whole concept of like bringing a product to to life, mm -hmm. right? So it's like months of hard work that go into some sort of vision, and then that vision actually comes into mm -hmm. play and like becomes like a reality, right? Like yeah. you see that person trying the food. Um, so like with our mask, our last one of our last deliveries we did, someone literally texted me and was like, like, thank you so much for putting this together. Like this food reminded me of my mom's cooking. And I think those magical, like, those are like magical moments for me. Like those customer texts, like yeah. when people text me and say yeah. that, like this food reminded them of home. Mm -hmm. Or the chef texted me and was like, mm -hmm. she was so grateful that, that we were able to put this together for her. Um, so I think that's probably the most rewarding part, yeah. for sure. That's amazing. Yeah, it's always when you hear people that are really loving, you know, what it is that you need. I think that's really cool to be able to Yeah, say. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think it's a lot of it just like, like thinking back to like, what was it a few months ago? Mm -hmm. And then what, like, what is it now? Yeah. Right? And it's just, yeah. it's really exciting to see just things like different parts of the business yeah. come to life. So true. In like four months' time. And like you, you know, right? It's yeah. Four yeah, months. So it's that's been super been a, awesome. A few months. Um, yeah. And even simple things, right? Like, yeah something like creating a website like it sounds silly but just like getting it done yeah or like delivering that first meal right like getting like that first chef on board yeah. right so i think yeah. like one of the most exciting moments for me was we set up our platform uh through shopify because it was like the easiest way to do it right right and like we set like the, the website went live and i still remember the moment that we got like we got our notification like our, the first notification was like like this order coming through mm -hmm. And it was this completely random person. Yeah. I had like no idea who it was. Mm -hmm. It was like some random person in New York. And I think that moment was like so special, yeah. right? Yeah. I think that's just like a really exciting thing to, to experience. Yeah. That's really cool.
Very yeah. inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, that was amazing. Thank you, Sagar, for Thank sharing you. your story and thanks all for that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for doing yeah, this. Thank you so guys much. for watching. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Do you have any last words of wisdom for our audience to share? You know, someone that wants to get started on something, second guessing themselves. Any last? Yeah. Any last no, I would just. I would say just go for it. You know, like just. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you're doing, I think just put yourself out there and um, it'll be a scary feeling, but it's a good feeling at the same time. Like, yeah. You'll figure it out. And I think yeah. that's, the, that's the only thing I would say. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. And I would 100% agree. All right. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Tiffin and Sagar. And um, if you did like it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe to join the Glow Dream Team community here if you haven't yet. And comment below. What should they comment below, Sagar? Whatever you feel like. You know, <laughs> give me some advice. <laughs> give give some me advice. some advice. <laughs> give him some advice. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, comment below giving him advice and also what you would order on Tiffin. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Check out the website. <laughs> Check out the Let website. Let him know what you think. I'll leave all the links to Tiffin and Sagar's socials below. Uh, you can check out Tiffin and reach out to him if you have any more questions. <laughs> so that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>